Hi, uh, my name is Ming Wang, and today I'm going to be doing a talk on bitwise operators. So let's start at the very beginning, bits and bytes. So bit is the smallest unit of data in a computer. It's typically represented by zeros and ones. And then a byte is eight bits, typically the smallest addressable unit memory. And here's a bonus. Four bits of data is a half byte, but it's also known as a nipple. OK, so then the common operators that most people use are logical operators. They're a little bit different from bitwise operators. So for example, a logical operator would evaluate the truthiness of the operand, short circuit depending on what the first operand is, and then return the last evaluated operand. So for example, true or false, true is truthy. So then it's an or statement, so it will short circuit, and then it will return true. So let's go to false. False or negative 1. False is falsy, like it sounds like. And then so I have to check the second operand, which is negative 1, which is truthy. But even though it might be falsy, it will still return since it's the second or last operand to be evaluated. So now there's bitwise operators. So what happens there? 14 or 3, why does it return 15? Well, bitwise operators, they turn the operand into a 32-bit 32 32 integer, and both operands are evaluated bit by bit, and then it returns a number as a result. So if we're going to talk about bits, we have to talk about binary representation. So why is 46101110? So in this representation, Starting from the right, each place has a value. Like in decimal, the first position is value 1, and then 10 to the 1, then 10 squared. So for binaries, it's the same thing, but we're in base 2. So then when combined together, it evaluates to 46. So behind the scenes of an OR operation, 14 gets turned into binary. It becomes 1110 and 3 becomes 0, 0, 1, 1. And when you OR those two together, 0 or 1 is 1, 1 or 1 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, and 1 or 0 is 1. So finally, you get 1, 1, 1, 1, which evaluates to 15. So here's a list of the bitwise operators. And 1 only if both bits are 1. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. When ended together, you get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. Uh, or 35 or 7, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. A as you can see, it's very long. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut it short. So it, when you or those two together, you get 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, which represents 39 in binary and 39 in decimal. So lists of Oh, XOR. One only if both bits are different. So 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. XOR, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So <laughs> it becomes 1, 1, all right, 48. <laughs> <laughs> all right, not is a little bit tricky. So it inverts each bit of the operand, operand. So it does not result in the same thing as a mathematical negation. So this binary digit represents 74. And then if you do a not 74, it becomes the inverted version. But what you get is not negative 74. You get negative 75. But why? So JavaScript integers are signed. So they have positive and negative values. And integers are represented in two's complement. The leftmost bit is the sign bit. So 1 for negative, 0 for positive. And when you use the not operator, it produces the following output. So if you negate n, the result would be n plus 1 times negative 1. So 74, not 74, 74 plus 1 is 75 times negative 1 is negative 75. So if you not negative 75, negative 75 plus 1 is negative 74 times negative 1 is 74. So now we head on to left shift. Left shift shifts x 
end bits to the left, and then it fills the right side with zeros. So 15 is 1, 1, 1, 1, and then you shift 15 two values to the left, two bits to the left, it becomes 1, 1, 1, 1, and then two zeros are added from the right, which results in 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, which is 60. Now we have a sign propagating right shift, so it shifts, it's like a left shift, but the opposite direction, and then instead of filling in with zeros, it fills in with the sign bit. So if your number is negative, then it shifts from the left ones to replace the, sh left, the shifted values from the right that you discard from the right. So for example, 72, the leftmost bit is zero. So when you shift three to the right, then it fills in the left side with zeros. And if you have a negative nine, the sign bit is one. And then when you shift two to the right, it replaces the left side shift the bits with ones. Now, a zero fill is like a sign propagating right shift, but it always fills with zeros from the left. That means when you left shift, I mean a right shift, a negative number, it always becomes positive. So why use bitwise operators? Typically, they're very fast. I'm not sure if that's the case with JavaScript since it doesn't really have it hardwired. And then it's essential for when you have limited CPU speed or storage, since when you operate it with bits, you can, you can modify individual bits inside like a single integer. So you could store values with the flag or mask. And you're able to do more with less code. But as a lot of people who've done code wars have seen, it's not necessarily more readable. So some cool things you can do with bitwise operators, using not and or for truncating numbers. So if you have 25.2 or zero, the result is 25. But if you also do double negation 34.24, then you end up with 34. But what's a con of this? It only works for up to 32-bit signed integers. So if you do double not on something like 3 billion, it's going to give you a negative number. Uh, so, oh, something else. You can use this for string index of, or index of anything. Doesn't have to be string. So, a lot of people do index of if is not equal to negative one, right? Not equals equals to negative one, then do something. So, you can do it like this. If not string dot index of, like hello in hello world, then you say console log found, or else you do something else. So why does this work? Uh, if you don't find the string, it results in negative one. And then if you do a not on negative one, it will return zero, which is a false value. Anything else will return anything but zero, which is truthy. So you can shorten your if statement with the not. Something else, uh, in place swap of two integers using XOR. So let's start with a equals 5, b equals 6, which is 101 and 110. If you do a XOR, 101, XOR, 110, you get 011. And then you do b equals 110, and you XOR that with 011, you get 101. And then 011, XOR, 101, and you get 101. So in the end, you get A equals 10, I mean 110, and B equals 101, and then that's 6 and 5, which you have swapped in place, saving memory. And this one is really interesting. So if you wanted to count the number of bits, you use this algorithm, and I made a little something to demonstrate what it's doing behind the scenes. And this is very efficient because it only runs for as many set bits in the string, I mean in the number. So let's start with something small, like 25, and we want to count the number of bits. What is the algorithm doing? So n, it starts as n equals 25, it's 11001, and then it does minus 1, 
and minus one, which is one one zero zero. And when you do that together, it changes the rightmost set bit to zero. And then as you keep going, it keeps zeroing out the rightmost bits. So the first iteration, the one at the end on the right becomes zero. And then the next one, one one zero 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 becomes one zero zero zero. And then it gets to the end and everything's zero, which ends the loop and then returns a count. So the count is three. And if we keep increasing the numbers, it'll work the same way. So like, let's say 200 and you run, which is also three. So something more random, which is 10. I'll provide a link to this so you could play with it yourself if you want to. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to talk about the efficiency. I have implemented three bit counting like functions. So the first one is the slowest, where I'm just changing into a string with two string, and then I'm doing a split, and then using a reduce, and I count each individual bit. I say, if it's one, add to the count. If not, then don't. And then the next one, I use a shift, a right shift, to keep shifting bits off the end. And then I'm counting by saying, is n divisible by 2? If it's not, I mean the modulus of 2. So if there's a remainder, that means it's, there's a 1 set on that end. And then I'm doing the same thing. If wait till it's 0 and then return the count. And then the last one is the one we we're talking about. So let's start with a very small number of runs. I'm going to run each of these for a thousand iterations. And you can see it's fairly similar, right? And then, so one, four, and seven milliseconds. And then, but if you keep increasing it, it gets more and more different. So 5, 29, 58 milliseconds. And then you keep going. And then 17 versus 217. And then uh, let's add one more little bit. It might take a little bit longer. I might cut it short. So 142 versus about two seconds. So it becomes much faster than the other algorithms. So let's go back to this. So what's the pros or cons of this algorithm? At worst, it's O log n. But typically, bit counting is log n, since for a number, it takes log n number of bits to represent it. So you only have to count log n. And then only iterates as many times as there are set bits. But it only works for up to 32-bit integers. So pretty cool, right? If you're still not convinced, all I can say is bits, please. Thank you. That, that concludes my talk. <laughs>